The Witch, written by Entropic Society. The dark night carried a storm closer to the small home, but it still lurked far off into the distance. The rumbling of the thunder was unaccompanied by lightning, nor even moonlight, making the night all the more dark in nature. The rain had yet to come, but there was still a slight rhythmic tapping on the young girl's window. Hannah, the young girl, peeked her head out from beneath the covers and glanced at the dark window to see nothing within its frame. She glanced at her pink nightlight briefly before covering her head beneath the thick covers of safety. Nighttime was especially dark for poor Hannah, especially since the incident between her parents' shouting match a couple of nights ago. She didn't understand how or why, but she was now with her mother, staying at her grandpa's cabin out in the woods, without daddy. The cabin and the surrounding woods were all new to her. She enjoyed the colorful forest during the day, but nighttime yielded shadows and sounds that awakened the most terrifying of dreams. Thankfully for young Hannah, she had made a friend, an old secret friend. A friend that would come by every evening and calm her by singing lovely lullabies that were both unfamiliar and calming. The tapping returned and again, Hannah found the strength to glance at the window to see an old and withered hand softly tapping the window with a long fingernail. Hannah smiled briefly at the window frame for it was now filled with a hooded figure. The only thing that Hannah could see under the hood was a long, warty nose and brown teeth that were scattered across the gummy smile of the old woman. The woman began to sing songs of dark dreams and distant horrors that were yet to arrive, but as for now, she was safe. Little did Hannah know, safe would be a relative word, a word that would only exist for the time being, as long as she kept the window closed. The old woman, after singing a dark tune or two, beckoned young Hannah to unlock the window. You don't even need to open it, dear. Just unlock it. I can do the rest. Hannah, despite being young and naive, she knew better. Her father had taught her the concept of stranger danger. She would never be allowed to open the front door for anyone that she didn't know. But he did never mention anything about a window. The old woman began to get desperate and offered Hannah a small velvety bag with a surprise inside. The old woman reached into the bag and pulled out what looked like a strange white stone with random edges. I have many of these inside this bag, and they can all be yours. Just unlock your window. I just want to come and say hello to mommy. I'm a friend of hers. Hannah's young ignorance had met its match. This old woman was mommy's friend, or so she thought. She wasn't a stranger anymore. It would be rude to keep mommy's friend outside waiting in the dark storm. Hannah got up and slowly pushed the dresser <laughs> under the window and climbed up and unlocked the window. Hannah quickly raced back to her bed and hid under the covers. That's a good girl, hissed the old woman as the window slowly slid open. Hannah's breathing began to overwhelm her as she hid under her covers. The old woman climbed in the window, placing the velvety bag on her dresser, and crawled over to the door and tried to open it. The door was locked from the outside. Mommy doesn't want us to leave, Hannah squeaked from beneath the covers. Don't worry, dear. I'm just going to say hi, and I'll be right back. The old woman then began slamming her frail body against the door repeatedly. Not long after, they heard footsteps walking over to the door outside. The frame of the door began to splinter as they both heard a scream coming from Mommy. The door quickly gave way and burst it open. Hannah began to cry as she heard Mommy not greeting her friend from the woods, but rather screaming in terror as things began to crash on the floor. 
The screams continued for a time as loud banging could be heard coming from the other room and vibrate across the floor. The screaming eventually dwindled, but the banging continued. Well, the screaming from Mommy at least. Mommy's friend, who Hannah soon realized was not her friend, could be heard grunting as if she was doing something laborious as the banging continued. The banging eventually stopped, and to Hannah's horror, the old woman came crawling back to her room and next to her bed. I got you more stones for your collection, the old woman said as she placed the white objects that were still wet with a dark liquid into the bag. The woman then sat next to her bed and told her another tale of some wretched disease that would infect the living and cause them to rot. She then crawled over to the dresser, climbed up, and out the window. Hannah slowly drifted off into sleep, but the sleep didn't last long. She was awakened not much later to strange men with guns coming into the cabin, and eventually her room. They all had badges much like the police, but they didn't dress like the police. Hannah's father was with these men and hugged her when he saw that she was still chained to the bed, but unharmed. Mommy was nowhere to be seen. You would think that mommy and daddy would want to be together, but they weren't. In fact, Hannah would not see mommy ever again. Hannah being so excited to finally see her father, after so long she gave him a gift. The same gift that the old woman gave her. He opened the bag and began to cry. Apparently, he had to give the bag to the police since some of the white stones belonged to mommy. Hannah had to tell the police about her friend that came and helped her. Without her, she'd still be out in the woods without daddy, they said. I guess in a bizarre way, that strange woman was in fact a friend after all.